are with the North Dakota College segment. We are excited to have a special guest, Mr. Matt Merkin, head coach at Minot State. They're having a tremendous season with a big weekend uh, sweep, included knocking off the number eight Duluth Bulldogs. We had a great interview. Here it is. All right, we're here with the big interview segment here with Sprainer and Riggs. Excited to have a very special guest, head coach of the men's basketball team, Mr. Matt Merkin. Matt, how are we doing today? Good, thanks for having me, guys. Matt, last Friday night I happened to be at your game there against St. Cloud and uh, a team that's given you fits over the years. You're able to get that one done. They've been a thorn in your side. Tell us about that win and how it felt. Yeah, definitely good to, to get that one. You know, it's been a team the the last few, you know, we, we've kind of had a, a, a history of having close games with them and the last few they've got the better of us. Um, you know, we had to play three in a row at their place because COVID last year we had to go there every time and then start off there this year and uh, had a little bit of a losing streak for us, those guys. And, um, you know, usually a team that for some reason we always seem to, to have a good battle with. Um, you know, way back when I started at Minot State, we had a, a kid out of St. Cloud that was one of kind of our first kids that we got here when we came after we'd gone Division Two, and, and they were a top – top 20 team in the country one year. We knocked them off down there, um, which was a huge victory for us. But, um, you know, they've had, they've had our number a little bit since then. Um, and it feels good to start the weekend off always on a Friday night. You know, you guys coach sports as well, where you're usually playing on a back-to-back -back days or maybe a Thursday, Saturday or something. It kind of clears it up a little bit more to start with a victory uh, and, uh, on that first game of the weekend always. So that's always a good way to, to tip it off. Absolutely. Now, of course, the big one, you know, is when you have a big statement win and playing against a top ranked, you know, top end team like like Duluth. Talk us through that one for us in terms of how that means for you guys. And we talk about, you know, obviously you're trying to progress to the end game and get to that Pentagon and obviously try to, you know, go deep into that type of tournament. But explain to us, you know, what that statement win for your guys is, both in terms of confidence and just things that you accomplished against a, you know, a top 10 team. Yeah, it was a huge win for us. They came in number number six in the country in, in NCAA Division II. So um, huge victory on our home court, um, you know, for so many reasons. Number one, you always want your your guys to feel like they can beat anybody, um, especially at home. Uh, number two, we're in a real real battle right now for uh, seating purposes and for the postseason and all that stuff. So that was a huge win as well uh, because of those things. Uh, but, you know, I don't know – I, I, I looked back a few years and I saw that uh, Spain, I know you guys beat Mankato when they were 13 one year. Did you guys get any top 10 victories? Um, I know I know you will you and the boys knocked off uh, St. Cloud State. I think they were number four one year. About four years ago, they knocked them off, which was a huge one for, you know, as far as the, the D2 teams that we have at Minot State for victories. So I had to, I have to check with you and see what, who you guys knocked off Spain in your in your uh, tenure? I'm on the spot. I yeah, I know. Uh, you know, we had a ton of uh, ranked victories. I think the closest we came to a top ten, we had Central Missouri at home, and they were number two, I think. And we went to double overtime, and Bello hit a shot from uh, about 25 yards away with a, like six seconds, and it got past their keeper. And it hit the post, Oof. and it rolled along the goal line behind the keeper, and the buzzer went off. <laughs> it didn't roll in or out; it oh. just rolled right along the goal line. And I thought maybe you know with turf, I, I remember that, one. Oh. <laughs> that, that was rough because that would have been a massive, yeah. massive victory, and we would have been the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. But um, but either way, it, it got us in the NCAA tournament. The the, the draw did. Yeah, you know how that goes with the way they do it in 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 NCAA D two is just playing. Playing quality teams is a big deal too, and then obviously beating them, you get the bonus points and all that sort of thing. And it's kind of got us, you know, we, we had a stretch on the road where we didn't play our best, um, but that's got us back at least in the conversation. Uh, one of the regional polls that came out had us 11th now, uh, which is a big deal. Um, you know, we've got a huge week this week too. Uh, we've got to keep winning for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, top 10, anytime you get a top 10, that's a statement win. And, you know, it's it's always that fine line. You want you want the boys feeling good about him, but you also want them to go back to work right away. And um, but it can be a confidence booster, and, and you know, let them know. It's always good to see that the 
what they're doing works and the hard work's paying off and moving you in the right direction. So definitely a big win for our program. And, and uh, we've got a few ranked, ranked victories, but that was definitely the highest team we've, we've knocked off. Uh, yeah, tell me this one. Um, how did it feel relative to your Pentagon victory? Which one's bigger? Which one, uh, <laughs> you know, which one uh, rank them? Yeah. Rank them. Yeah, that's always the question as a coach, right? I think that the one this weekend was kind of, um, I don't know, our guys had a real, you guys know the feeling as a coach where you just have that feeling. Um, and earlier in the week, you know, we had just talked as a coaching staff and kind of said, we're going to, we're going to beat them. You know, like you really, you know, a lot of times you feel like you're, you got a good chance, but something about the way our guys had gone about their business we felt really good about our game plan that our assistant coaches had put together. Um, and we just, our guys had, it, we're really going about their business the right way. So, um, and then we really played well uh, and got after him a little bit. It was almost strange. We, 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 it was, you know, we knocked him off by about 16 or so and the, the crowd never really got into it huge. Cause we had a nice lead on lead on him. Um, you know, and it wasn't really in doubt too much. I, I'd probably say the Pentagon one, just because postseason, you guys know, playoffs is always special. Um, and I got to give credit, you know, the NCAA, this and that, and the NSIC, and sometimes you don't agree with the, the higher ups of what they do or whatever, but our conference puts on a tremendous men's and women's basketball tournament down at the Pentagon. They just do, I mean, it's unbelievable the job that our conference and that that, that facility does. And, um, you know, the way that our, our student athletes are treated and they pay for everything and they really make you feel like it's a big deal. Um, so that was, that was a really big one. That one was, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick that one just cause it's postseason. Um, and it got us a shot at Northern state who was a top five team. We weren't, weren't able to knock them off. Um, but that was a, that was certainly a big win, but Absolutely. you got, you guys uh... know, I mean, hopefully I can win. Win as many big games as you guys have won in your careers, and then then you got more more options to choose from, right? And it was fun to debate those things. Absolutely. You've had a you've had a great run here at Minot State, uh, but I want to ask you about one of your local kids there, uh, Ben Bull. Um, man, he can defend in the perimeter really well, huh? Huge, huge key for us um, to that victory over Duluth. Um, the best defender, defensive player we have. He's really bought into that, takes pride in that. Um, you know, our, our, you know, our, our local guys have been playing really well, especially the last couple of weeks. You know, there a lot of our local guys are, there's a little bit of a drought coming through here as far as really guys that I thought were D2 level players. It's been a lot of good players throughout the years out of, out of Minot or the surrounding areas. But, you know, we had a little drought where we didn't have anybody local for, for a while. And I think when we were able to, to get Ben to commit, and he's one of those goofy kids that's a third year freshman because of the COVID stuff and redshirting, you know, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, but when Ben and Mason committed, you know, they had a, just such a great career at, uh, at Ryan three state tournaments and so many big games. And when those guys came, that was a big deal. And then Jackson Gunville came in Easton Larson the next year who'd been on Minot High's team and Jackson and Ben are playing a lot for us right now. Um, but man, Ben is just a, he's got a toughness level that, uh, that you really want to coach as a, you know, as a coach, you just love having guys like that. So huge part of our, our win over Duluth the other night and a huge part of our, our team for, for the next few years. Just great to have that guy kind of as a cornerstone in your recruiting, you know, and anytime you have a young guy that's playing well, you just, you just love it as a coach. Cause you, you got a little stability for a few years. Absolutely. You know what, Matt, I've, I've known you for a while and Hey, I remember even the time when you, you got announced the head coach at, at Minot state and, Kind of in that transition post, you know, what do you call it, the grace area of what we call for the NCA, and especially for our transition for D2. And there's some lean years early on trying to establish a new culture and all that stuff to where the program is right now, where you guys are constantly competing. You guys are a threat now in the NSIC, and that's a major culture shift. And so, Matt, my question to you, and this is, you know, for two coaches, what was the key to this transition for for this program to, to put themselves in a spot where they're contending every year, you're getting outstanding recruits, you're getting the best local kids here, and there's just a buy-in, uh, which is just infectious. So just, you know, tell us a little bit about where, where this transition yeah. has been, because it's been big for us, or your program too. Yeah, it's been huge. You know, it's been, it's hard. I, first of all, I can't believe I've, this, is, this is my 10th year at Minot State. It's crazy. Um, 
and and you know you guys were here um, for a lot of that as well and just the level of competition in our league is huge and th this is a debate you know and I don't know if Jason and I ever talked about this but and, and it would not have been possible due to the NCAA rules but in a lot of ways in a lot of ways it may have been an easier transition this can be debated at least um, if Minot State would have would have gone to a Division One program in some sports because if you go division one and I'll just throw this out there, you, you join, you know, maybe you join the big sky or some other conference um, and no disrespect to the big sky, but the big sky is not the ACC in basketball or the, you know, it's not the sec in football or whatever, you know, I know they have different conference mm -hmm. than that, but when we joined the NSIC, we basically joined pretty much the best conference in, in NCAA division two. So not only do you go up a level, but then you go to the very best of that level. That's a huge, it's a huge commitment from so many people and, you know, from administration to the community, to everybody, it's a, it was a big jump. And, and I don't want to say that in a way that, uh, you know, cause I, I know there was a lot of success in a lot of sports at the NAI level and a lot of people put in a lot of work, but a lot of people put in a lot of work for that jump too. So, um, man, it got tough right away for a lot of our teams. Um, and like you said, just trying to be in it for the long haul. And, and you mentioned kind of our first thing was we said was we've got to get, we've got to get the best local kids that we can get and we've got to make it where they want to stay in Minot and play for us. And there's just something about playing for your hometown team where it means a little bit more, um, to those guys. Um, so that's, that was a huge part of it, but, and then you're trying to, you're trying to go through those baby steps of developing a program with little, little wins here and there. And, um, it's a, it's a long haul and we were trying to be in it for the, for the long haul as a coaching staff. And that was kind of my goal the whole time is to get, and the, the other thing is, you know, just, I think coaches say it, but I, and you guys know this though, but I wanted to, I want to coach guys that I truly enjoy being around every day. Cause you put in 100%. so much time and so much effort. It's a, such a huge, you know, you're on the bus for how many hours you guys know it's, it's great. People <laughs> yeah. wouldn't understand. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, you're rolling in at seven in the morning, seven, sometimes later than seven in the morning after playing a night game the day before. And, um, you know, when you stop at 4 a.m. and walk into the truck stop, you want to be laughing with the guys. You don't want to be looking to see who's trying to grab a candy bar and walk out or something crazy like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, and we've been able to coach guys that really enjoy being around, um, especially now, you know, my wife and I. That's a big, big change for me, too. You know, being a single coach for so many years and all the all the hours on the road recruiting. And now we've got a, I've got a wife and we've got two little ones under the age of two. So but you want you want to have your team over for you know, dinner or whatever, and you want them to play with your kids and enjoy it. And you want your kids to look up to them, not just as athletes, but as people. So it sounds cliche with all that stuff, but man, isn't that some of the best part of being a coach is that's that sort of stuff a little bit. And, 100%. Um, I remember my last year in life. Minot, we, we had your team over for dinner and that was a lot of fun. Uh, we were, we that was were awesome. We teach the, awesome. the guys board games and stuff. And you know, that was uh, yeah. that was a pretty cool night. There's some truth to what you're saying about the D2, D1, and uh, D2's a that's a that's a that's a journey. It's not a quick jump. I think you would agree with that. Um, so, so some of the stuff that people don't understand. So in D2, you're it's limited number of scholarships. It's not like a, a, a huge number like Division One. So, you know, when you're recruiting to a a city that doesn't have a metropolitan area. You, you put your scholarships into to, to a majority of your team moving from far away, so you have a, a, all your money on your starting lineup. Mm -hmm. So if you take a Grand Valley or a Mankato or a St. Cloud, they can build a roster in their metropolitan area, you know, with fractions of scholarships For and whatnot, sure. or walk-ons that can compete at the Division II level you know, uh, with local people. And that's, that's one, that's one. And there, and there are some fantastic local people. I was going to ask you about the foster kid at rugby, you know, uh, you know, if, if he's on your radar, uh, I mean, he is a long athletic kid and, you know, and he runs the court cool. defensively. I was really, some really impressed. Uh, but there are some local kids like uh bowl and Hedberg and whatnot and Rudolph and stuff that have helped your program. Uh, but you don't have the metropolitan base to get three or four walk-ons that end up being good uh, sixth men or starters in Division Two, like a metropolitan area would have. Um, but whereas Division One, now we would never have the income to compete with the ACC or the SEC or anything like that. But 
you do, you can get to the scholarship limit and out recruit a big sky. And I think that's what Merck is, uh, Absolutely. Merck is talking about, but that's, yeah, and that's the, that's the initial jump, you know, division two is a long right, journey and, right. and you're 10 years in, I mean, you're seeing this journey through and your team's in position to have a home playoff yeah, game and get back to the Pentagon. So that's uh that's good. Kind of the standard has been raised. I mean, and that, like I said, that, that goes from, you know, like you said, as a, as a culture of a program now, those kids that, you know, you, you attempt to try to recruit in the past, now you are being able to make those phone calls and they are going to listen because the program is now established and that competition goes with it. So, But, uh, hey, Matt, we, we want to thank you. Good. Thank you very much for your yeah. time. This has been a great experience. I know uh, we'll definitely be having him on again in the future. Hey, Spanner? Yeah. Absolutely. And I like that you hit on that little Division right, two topic because we're having a debate coming up here in the next few weeks about That's Minot State, yeah. should they have gone to Division two? So I like your lead-in for us, Matt. <laughs> that was nice of you. <laughs> All right. All right, All right, bud. Take care. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate, uh, appreciate what you're doing for your local sports. You bet. Thanks a lot.